Okay, well, that's a toughie. How would I describe MMN? Uh, well, it's an exotic um, disease that nobody will know what you're talking about when you tell them you have it. When I first found out that I had it, it wasn't even called MMN. It was called chronic multifocal demyelinating neuropathy. And uh, so I looked up demyelinating, I can't even say it properly, in the dictionary and it was nerve coatings being taken off your nerves. And that reminded me of MS or sounded similar to MS. So I thought, oh, I've got MS. So at the beginning it was very scary, but um, here I am 30 years later and it's not so scary anymore. What first happened was um, I was a mid thirties I just went to open the, you know, get keys out of my pocket and open up the trunk and my hand wouldn't hold the keys. And I thought that was really weird. So I went to the family doctor and my hands looked normal. So he didn't really know what to do, but he did send me off to a neurologist. Couldn't find anything, so it was just maybe it's all in your head or don't know what it is anyways. So I went home and um, it started to uh, progress, but very gradually. Up until that point, I, other than having two children, I'd never been in the hospital. I wasn't a sick person at all. I was pretty active. I was working full time. And uh, so months later, I went back to my family doctor again, and he sent me back to the same uh, neurologist. And this time something showed up that the nerve wasn't conducting the message. So I got sent to a doctor in a downtown Toronto hospital. And he stuck needles in my hands and my arms and then did these electrical currents through them. And it was excruciatingly painful. And then he wanted to do a treatment called plasmapheresis. So um, did that procedure a few times and put me on prednisone and um, sort of went home and that was supposed to be the cure, um, but it didn't really last for very long. Then about seven years later, my neurologist said there was a new treatment and it was the immunoglobulin IVIG. After the three months that I did it, Again, the, the uh, strength would come back in my hands, but nothing prolonged. Um, so the doctor said, you know, this treatment didn't really work for you, so we wouldn't do it again. It's a very expensive treatment. She said, the only other um, remedy I can offer you is to take cyclophosphamide which she said was a cancer medication. By that point, I'd had it about 10 years. It was progressing so very, very slowly that I thought, and I had no pain with it, I was still able to work. Um, so I thought when I looked up what the uh, side effects were of this drug, I thought I wasn't, the benefits and the risk that I would be taking to take this drug didn't outweigh what I was going through right now. So I decided not to take the drug and there was nothing really else that was offered to me. So I just kind of said, okay, God, my children are still young. If you could just let me live till 50 and be okay with my family. Then after that, um, you know, if you wanna, if my body gets destroyed, that, you know, so be it. But just let me sort of be able to look after my family and my kids until I'm 50. I realized kind of myself that if my, muscles were deteriorating, 
that I wanted to keep the muscles that were still okay working in good condition. So I started um, being a walker. I used to come home from work and I'd walk like 5K after work. I just tried to keep as physically active as I could so that the rest of my muscles would continue to work right. In 2003, I had my 50th birthday. So I said, I've made it to 50 and um, all this extra, all, any time after this is all bonus time. Around 2012, I uh, thought my hands again were getting weaker. I hadn't seen the neurologist for years. And um, I asked for a referral to go back to her. So she said really the same thing. I don't have anything new to offer you. The IVIG didn't work for you. Cyclophosphamide is the only thing. I said, well, I'm not interested. Um, I said, is there like any physio or something you could connect me with? So she uh, made a referral to Bridgepoint North, which is a fabulous hospital. And I met a doctor there and when I saw her, she knew exactly what I had gone through. And, uh, well, I cried. It was just, she had such a calm, um, accepting, supportive manner about her that it was such a relief to finally connect with someone that really sort of had seen the progression of how this disease had started and was sort of now. The best thing that's come out of this diagnosis is that I've started to take, I started when I got the diagnosis, to take better care and more interest in my physical health. So I go to a gym, I lane swim, I can swim a mile. I can do 64 lengths um, and I do that two times a week and I lift weights. I try to like get enough sleep because I understand stress is um, um, could have been something that caused this in the first place. Stress is not good for the body at any time. So I try to get plenty of sleep and to eat properly. So um, I am 66 now, and I had a lot of good bonus years. I did a lot of traveling. I saw my daughter get married in the Bahamas. I've seen two daughters graduate from university. I've had a lot of good things happen. So I think um, it's helped me to take better care of myself. It's made me conscious of my finite physical body. Mm-hmm. <laughs>